there you go. This piece. I've got all my pieces pre-cut and fit. Check this out though, folks. We've got squeeze out, which is what we want. Just lay out a nice zigzag. And there we go. Welcome back to our family's boat shop, everyone. My name is Joe Buskins. I'm a second generation U.S. Coast Guard licensed professional boat builder. And I also hold a 100 ton captain's license, which I use during the summer months to operate our custom built 29 foot center console here in the background that we actually built here in our family shop. So today we are doing more DIY type projects, um, working with some epoxy today, and then we're gonna be laminating and bonding some plywood together. So what we're trying to do here is represent if you are building a stringer section or maybe bonding a piece of marine ply into an existing transom, but we're gonna be using epoxy today. Now we have been using a lot of polyester here recently, and if you wanna see more about working with polyester and marine plywood, you can check back elsewhere in the channel just a few episodes back. And matter of fact, this would be the piece you're looking for. This is our sample piece that we've been building where we're using polyester and fillers, and we actually ran some PVC pipe and glass those in and whatnot. And, uh, but today I'm pretty excited about this. So what we're gonna do, we've went ahead and we've staged a lot of stuff to save you guys time. I'm really gonna try to hustle through this. There's gonna be a lot of details from start to finish, but I'm gonna try to move along as rapidly as possible. So we went ahead and did all of our prep work, cut all our pieces, we've marked everything. And again, the idea is that we're representing maybe a small stringer section, and we're gonna be using epoxy to laminate this together and get it prepped and ready to actually eventually put some 1708 biaxial with some epoxy resin as the finished material as well. So we got everything staged, lots of fillers, got all of our screws and whatnot ready. And what we're gonna be doing is just starting with some raw material. Now this is a readily available epoxy system. West Systems, probably something you've seen at your local marine hardware store, readily available but there are plenty of really good marine grade epoxy systems out there. The West system, uh, something I've worked with, most of you have, so we're gonna go with that today. Now to save us a little time, I went ahead and pumped out six pumps of the resin, and this is gonna be a one-to-one -one pump ratio. Now the ratios are gonna vary, obviously there's less catalyst than resin, but we're gonna go six pumps of catalyst, now normally, that's three, four, five, six. Normally when we're dispensing resin, I recommend going one pump resin and while that's cycling back, one pump of the catalyst. Now, what we're gonna be using, just your regular old little disposable, we call these popcorn cups. We use them all the time, our local distributors. We'll try to put some kind of a link for these, but they're a disposable one quart cup and it makes cleanup really nice and easy. I've had some questions about cleanup and how we deal with that. Sometimes we just use disposable mixing cups and we don't have to clean. Now, one cool thing about epoxy is it might be a little bit easier to clean up in some cases. You can actually use um, some denatured alcohol will actually thin it and then you can actually use straight vinegar, but then you would have to rinse it with something like acetone afterward to kind of remove any of the residue. And of course, acetone can work. Now, one of the reasons people like working with epoxies, especially uh, for folks that are DIYers, is it's readily available. You can go to the most of the marine hardware stores, find it online. It also does not smell nearly as strong as styrene based like vinyl ester and polyesters uh, the smell is not strong at all compared to those two and then it does bond very tenaciously to about everything and it's also really good at waterproofing so not that um I try to give you guys kind of good better best or pros and cons versus you know just this is what you're supposed to use in every situation there's a time to use epoxy and there's time to use polyesters and vinyl esters so generally about two minutes of mix time is gonna be what most 
companies are going to man or manufacturers of epoxy are going to recommend. So today we've got a selection. That's your colloidal silica, which that is very popular, and the microfibers. Now you also have a filleting blend, and we got a high density adhesive filler. I tend to like to use the colloidal silica. Now I'm going to show you guys a little trick today. I'm going to turn the vacuum on and we've got a little apparatus here. You can see this little box that we've built today. We've got our shop vac running in here to pull a little vacuum. And uh, generally you would want to be wearing a mask and gloves. And I will be putting one on here shortly, but the vacuum is gonna cut, catch the majority of the dust that we're gonna be making. And again, colloidal silica is not something you want to breathe a lot of. We're going to go several heaping scoops. Now that was six pumps of each. And a lot of times it's pretty equal volumes. It's going to get you where you need to be when it comes to your fillers. So if you had a quart of resin you would probably want about a quart of fillers, give or take. All right, let's just start right there. It's better to go too light on the fillers than to go too heavy. And I find just a nice, easy action. You don't really want to use a power tool to mix this because you're going to create too much airborne material. You can see that starting to thicken up nicely. Again, it's better to go light on the fillers. You can always add more, but if you've put too much of the fillers in, then you've got to add more resin which means you would have to mix it, then add it in. <clears throat> you want to be sure it's activated before. All right, so that is pretty thick. Not as thick as I would like it. So we're going to go a touch more. And there's no exact formula on this, folks. But that is one of the cool things with epoxies is that you can create a real variety here we go once again now it is fairly mild in my part of the country today Temperatures are falling. It's in the evening. And all right, we should be pretty good. You see how nice that captured any airborne material. I want to continue to mix that just a little bit longer. But epoxies, if you've never really worked with them too much, it's not like polyester resins where you add more or less catalyst. With epoxies, you use different hardeners. They usually have a slow, medium, and a fast. Today we're actually using a fast because it is quite cool, and I think this will move along nicely. There you go. Now you could thicken that up, but for today's purposes, I'm pretty happy with that. Some people like the consistency of a creamy peanut butter is a real popular. So what I'm gonna do, epoxy resins, and polyester resins, vinyl ester resins, they are an exothermic material, meaning they generate heat as they start to cure. And as they generate heat, it makes the material cure even faster. As it cures faster, it generates more heat, and you have this runaway exothermic reaction. So one thing you can do to help with that is spread the material out 
and you can get it where it doesn't generate as much heat within itself. So we're spreading this material. I know that looked kind of like, look like I'm going crazy there, but that keeps it from holding a lot of heat. Now what we've done, we went ahead and cut our pieces and for the, for the sake of time, one thing you would normally do in a piece like this would be to go ahead and prime this with some resin and wait till it's just starting to tack off. Um, sometimes it can take 20, 30 minutes. You still want it tacky to the touch, but you don't want it to get hard. In that case, you'd have to clean the amine blush, which we'll talk about that in a minute. So just for demonstration purposes though, we've got raw wood here. Normally though, we would sand it very aggressively. We would use something like this big grinder here with a 24 grit, which we've already done. And what you wanna do is put some tooth into that material. And you can actually see some of the grinder marks and whatnot there. And then a lot of times what we like to do is heat it up with a heat gun just a little bit. Now, again, if you wanna see how that process works, you can jump back to the how to fiberglass over plywood. And we show a little bit more of the grinding and the prep work uh, of that phase. But today, we're again trying to move this thing right along for you folks. Now we've already pre-drilled everything and we're gonna do something different. We've actually got some vent holes there for you folks. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna use this little notch trial A lot of times we just like to get some material on there. The notch top trowel allows you to give, get a very uniform thickness and coverage everywhere, which is important. You don't want to put just big blobs. I'll clear this back just a smidge. Very important to get material everywhere and get it on uniformly. All right, and we are gonna do both surfaces of this piece. Kind of guesstimated how much we would need. I hope, hope I'm pretty close. What's cool is they do have, if you wanna put less on one side, you can go to the smaller teeth and that will spread the material a little thinner. So say for example, we've got it on one side and we're running a little light on material. As long as you've got enough on there, you can go with the smaller teeth and that'll push that material around Now, when it comes to epoxy, I know it's very popular and it's good stuff. And a lot of folks may be of the impression that that is what most boats are build up, built of. But in fact, most boats on the market today, more than likely are built out of polyester resin. I would probably say 95% or more. Now, I've got a little bit of material left and I'm gonna just get it right down there on the corner. Again, this is just a demonstration piece that I made for you folks. So there may be a few little variables and I'll try to explain the whys, the whys and the why nots. Now again, you can see I've got an arrow for orientation. I know exactly which way this is gonna go. I've got all my pieces pre-cut and fit. We're just gonna let that settle in nice and easy we want some nice uniform squeeze out everywhere we go very nice now sometimes now i did not double glove today sometimes you can double glove and uh if you get the sticky hands i gotta go to a drill at this point i'm gonna start fresh but you can also put on two pairs of gloves so that you've constantly got a fresh pair underneath and today we're using some nitrile 
some folks that maybe if you're allergic to latex, a lot of times we wear, we'll wear the latex, but nitrile is also an option. And we've got a handful of, these are inch and a quarter stainless steel screws. Now this is something else a lot of folks, I'm gonna start right in the middle. And again, we have already pre-drilled Pilot hold everything. You can see we got some squeeze out there on our vent, our vent holes. That is actually what you want. I like to start from the middle and then work my way out if possible. Work it out nice and uniformly. And the idea is that we get squeeze out everywhere. Check this out though, folks. We've got squeeze out, which is what we want. And you can see we've got squeeze out, squeeze out. And then this one is almost, that tells me that we have a good bond throughout that surface. Now this is obviously a small piece, but if you had a much bigger, like a large transom piece of marine ply or CUSA, um, it may be tricky to screw one to the other. Obviously you couldn't screw through the boat. Now, we've actually built some big, large clamps. When we built our 29-footer, these are transom clamps that we've actually built where you just got a series of screws or bolts that run through, and this would go over the back end of the boat. Generally, these are on the inside, and they'd be putting the clamping pressure against the new material, and you would just tighten them uniformly. Usually, we start at the middle and work our way out. And these little vent holes that we put in here help us to see when we've got good squeeze out on our material. That lets us know that there's full contact, which is exactly what you want. You want full contact. Now, normally what I would do, we've got a little, little blade and you can take some of this excess material and you can wipe it right back I usually like two or three wipes if possible to fill that surface up because at some point you would be coming back and you would be putting some epoxy over this. Just like so, and we're gonna put it right back in. We've got a little excess squeeze out. I like to clean everything up nice, nice and neat working neat, it is possible. Planning your work is a big one. Now, one thing you can do that's kind of interesting on these little vent holes, if you don't get good squeeze out, you can actually come back with unthickened resin. And when I drilled these holes, this is actually a little trick that I forgot to mention to you guys. So these larger holes were vented I actually drill them at about a 45 degree angle. So I'll start the drill, and then as we get in, I drill it at an angle. And that way, if we wanna take some unthickened resin, it's acting like a funnel. Gravity is helping that resin run down in there and it can fill any voids or cavities that you might have, that you might have in the material. This is another thing we've had a lot of questions about is, how do we keep our stuff clean? And the answer is generally, because we are doing so much of this stuff, just keeping a five gallon bucket with a couple gallons of acetone in there. And it's obviously, it looks kind of dingy and dirty, but what we'll do many times is we will just take a little shop towel. These are the ones we get from Lowe's, but any quality shop towel will work. And normally what I'll do is try to get the bulk and just use a little paintbrush and get the bulk of the material off of my tools before it starts to set. These little spreaders are not very expensive, but I try not to waste them if I can. We'll do a little bit of cleaning and then we'll be ready right to go right to the next batch here. And I'm gonna show some different materials. We've actually got some West Systems 610 adhesive. Now, 
If you've got a smaller job and you don't want to deal with mixing your own thickened material, that may be a good solution for you is to use that. And it comes in a cartridge and it mixes internally. There's actually a very neat little mixing tip on there that does a really, really cool job. So I've gotten the bulk of that material off of there and you guys have seen me use my little squeeze bottle. It's labeled acetone. Many times what we'll do is we'll take clean acetone and we'll just rinse any residue off of there. Same goes for this one. You're gonna have a little bit of residue on there. Now again, if acetone bothers you or you don't wanna use it, you can actually use vinegar or you can use the denatured alcohol. And those, maybe for those of you that are a little more sensitive to things or maybe if you don't have access to acetone, there again, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna hit that with a little wipe down. Keeping your workspace tidy though and clean and planning your work makes a huge difference. We probably spent more time planning and laying everything out this afternoon than it's actually gonna to take to assemble this part for you guys. So, all right. Where did my lid go? There it is. <laughs> oh, good old trusty acetone bucket. Now, obviously acetone is very, very flammable. And um, normally we would be wearing, you'd be wearing a respirator. We're in a big shop. We've got some good air movement in here. And uh, we're pretty used to this stuff. Now, sometimes you'll get a little bit of oozing, oozing out of those. And it's actually okay to come back and tool with your finger just a little bit. Now, we're gonna be building this, we're gonna be putting a piece together that um, obviously this would represent a stringer or something of that nature. And I wanna show you folks how the 610 works. If you don't want to mix your own material, we've got these parts already cut and fit. And I'm gonna use this dispensing cartridge Just lay out a nice zigzag pattern. Now again, you could mix up the material just like we mixed for the demonstration, demonstration transom piece. Just trying to show there are some options, folks. Good, better, best, or Pros and cons. Different parts of the world, you may have different materials available to you. This stuff is great, by the way, if you've got little screw holes that need to be filled, you can actually put that tip in there and inject some epoxy into a screw hole or there's something where there's a void behind some material and it works beautifully. This would be a great thing to keep on your boat if you had a large sailboat or a liveaboard trawler. Matter of fact, this stuff is great even just to have at home. It's one of those things that you can fix a lot of things with it. So I'm gonna go again, remember the large teeth are gonna deliver a lot of material. I'm gonna go with the small ones that should be plenty for this. Yeah, let's see, I'll start back here and just kind of see if we need more or less. We're gonna have enough to go. I may have to apply a little more. Folks, because most boat builders work with either a vinyl ester or polyesters, we generally only use epoxy for bonding, which is where epoxy really shines. It's great at waterproofing, 
and it's great at bonding. But when you're building a boat, there are definitely some little nuances that make it a little more challenging when you're doing production work. And like I said, there's probably, I would imagine less than 2% of the boats on the planet. I could be wrong. It could be as high as five in some other countries. Now you can see here, folks, we've kind of spread this around. We got pretty good coverage here, but I've got some dry spots. Didn't quite have enough. You can always come back and apply more as needed. That's what I like about this material. It is pretty easy to work with. It bonds really well. And if you guys have any materials that you really enjoy working with, I'd love to hear about it. Matter of fact, we've got a lot of our viewers now from overseas, Australia, UK, we've had Scotland, Ireland, uh, South Africa. It's pretty cool to see folks from around the world watching what we're doing, but you guys may have access to materials. Um, we talk about compatibility a lot of the times. There, uh, there's a material we call CSM or chop strand mat here in the United States that it's got binders in it that doesn't work that great with epoxy, but overseas there are CSMs with powder binders that work just fine with epoxy and uh, other materials. So you guys, if y'all want to comment, let me know some of the stuff you guys like to work with. Love hearing from everyone. Okay, that's pretty nice. I'm gonna do one more just nice draw. Beautiful, a little lift, a little lift at the end is what we're doing there. It's kind of like when you're painting and you kind of feather the gun out there at the very end. We've got a little bit of left over here. I'm just going to use my little cup and we're going to hold that off to the side. You can see different color material there, but still you're working with West Systems brand epoxy and they're quite compatible. Not really an issue there. So we've got our pencil mark. I've got a little V there showing proper alignment. This is one of the things that we do when we're here in the boat shop is a lot of times when we're laying this stuff out, we will have little pencil marks that show us right there. Maybe my cameraman can show. So you can kind of get a visual and you can see that we do in fact have some alignment there now i didn't put vent holes in this one because there's quite a few screw holes in there and it's a fair fairly narrow board but you can still you can even put vent holes in something like this to allow air to escape and you can even add some material back in and generally i like about a six inch gap or so at max you can see we don't have any more than about six inches or so without a fastener being applied. Now, again, I'm gonna start in the middle here, folks, and we have pre-drilled, we have pre-drilled everything, so it should all run right back together, is the plan. And, there we go. I get a lot of questions about, do you leave the fasteners in place? And personally, we do and have in the past. We use like marine grade stainless steel. I suppose you could use bronze fasteners if you want. And we have always left them in. I haven't seen a problem with that. It hasn't been an issue for us. And to me, it's just gonna help the piece hold together that much better. You've got the mechanical bond of a screw or fastener and then you've got the epoxy making a bond as well. So I like it and it's worked for us. Now, some folks may feel like you need to pull the fasteners out, but it can just be more work. And uh, I, don't, I don't see a point in it. I think it makes the boat stronger. And 
Again, this isn't me experimenting. Um, our family's built well over 300 vessels up to 53 feet in length and we do it professionally. So try to show you guys proven techniques that we've actually used in the shop that we've had really, really good success with. But um, we're always open to trying and learning new things as well. We like sharing what we know with you guys. All right. Very, very cool. I like it. So we've got, we've got some squeeze out there, which is what we want. It's not an awful lot. I normally like to see squeeze out on the material. We're looking, we're looking for some material to come out. You can see maybe my cameraman can zoom in there and back here on the back of the piece. We've got good squeeze out and we're going to come back and we're going to clean that up just a little bit before it starts to firm up on us and it also just makes got a splinter there. Just staying neat and tidy. It's worth a lot. That will work. I like it. We got a little bit flowing out there on the bottom. That's okay. And it's really nice to even have a helper sometimes, somebody to somebody to assist and hand you stuff. That will be brutally strong. Now, if you were doing this with polyester resin, you could put a layer of mat or what we call CSM or mat. Usually we do two or three layers. So in lieu of the thickened epoxy, that's actually how we put the transom in in our big 29 is we did three layers of CSM wet out and then we bonded in the piece of Kusa. Um, theoretically, you could do the same thing with epoxy, but it seems like thickened epoxy is usually more the way you go versus when we do polyester transoms, we usually put CSM or mat because epoxy resin is more stable once it cures. It's not as brittle. Um, polyester resin is harder and stiffer, but it can be more brittle. So that's why we don't use it. So what we're doing now is we are gonna get ready. I'm actually gonna show you guys how we radius. We're prepping for the next phase and we're gonna be wrapping epoxy over the top of this board. But I'm gonna show you guys we generally will use a router to do that. And we're gonna zip down here right quick and just demonstrate. Now, normally if I were building this piece, we would have routed it in completely beforehand, but I wanna show you guys how the router works. So easy, that's a little Bosch palm router. It's a variable speed. And generally, you want a bit, you guys may have seen in some of our other videos, which we got well over 150 videos now, about the radius of a grown man's finger is what I generally like to see. Now you can also use a high speed grinder such as this DeWalt with an aggressive grit disc on there and you can sand a radius on there or if you don't have one of those you can use a 40 grit on a little dewalt as a matter of fact we really like these little 3m sanding blocks and these work really great sometimes for just coming in and they have a velcro sticky back really really neat way to do things all right so that looks Pretty good. 
I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Everything looks neat and tidy. I believe I have enough in this cartridge. Um, what we're going to do now, obviously, if this was a stringer, this would probably just be set in place and set in a bed of thickened epoxy or tabbed into place with some fiberglass. But I am actually going to demonstrate putting a bead of this material under here for you guys. Just so you have an idea of what you might want to do. And then we're going to actually mix up a fillet blend and we're going to put a nice radius on the inside corners as well. Little bit extra for you folks. All right, and we are just going to go, and you can see that we've already put pencil marks, and I've got arrows here that a lot of times when you're placing these parts, it's just really, really nice to have. Some landmarks, you know, that way you know exactly where you're going. We're starting to see a little bit of squeeze out, which is a good thing. So check this out. What a neat little part. Now, sometimes you'll have a screw go through just a bit. And a lot of times once everything is cured, we'll come back with like a high speed grinder or you could even use a piece of rough sandpaper on a hand disc and knock that little tidbit off. But that is something to look for if you're doing this. Is occasionally you will get a screw or fastener that'll punch through. Now, a lot of times we would also come back and obviously you could pick up some of this material and usually two or three wipes, sometimes more from different directions. And again, we have been doing it this way for years and years, folks. We've built many boats and I just don't see any reason to pull the fasteners out if they're fully encapsulated. You don't have to worry about corrosion. And honestly, if you're working with Kusa or with Marine Ply, even if the fastener did start to do something weird, we've never seen it cause a problem in any of the boats we've built. And like I said, this is how I did it in my own personal boat. So that's what I chose to do. Although we did use Kusa, and Kusa would work in very similar ways if you were working with Kusa board. Now, here's an interesting little bit, and a lot of folks, again, may wonder how, you'll notice we've got a staggered or an offset joint there, folks. And if this were the transom and if you were building a stringer, now this is a miniature version. I generally like to see at least a foot of offset. Here, obviously, we don't have as much just because we're dealing with a smaller piece. But you would cut your next stringer section and you would have a staggered joint. Um, or you could even imagine it, you could imagine it that way. But this piece would continue on, this piece would continue on, and you would continue your screws and fasteners. And you're always gonna wanna stagger these joints. And like say, for example, rather than buy an inch and a half thick material or one inch material, I would buy like two layers of three quarter and stagger the joints, because if you have just the thickness you're going to end up with, you're going to end up with a with a, a butt joint, which in my opinion is not as strong. And again, that's how we did it in our 29 is we used thinner material, but two layers and then we staggered those joints and you can just continue to build this and you can make it as long as you want to. Okay, folks. So this is the material we use the fillet, filleting blend and we've already for the sake of time saved you guys. The trouble of watching us mix this, it's basically the same process as what we used when we were mixing the other batch for bonding the transom. 
But we've got a cool little trick here. You can see we've got a Ziploc bag. I've got one of the, the ends of it pointed in the downward, downward position there. And what we're gonna do is load that Ziploc bag with the blend. Now remember you wanna work fast because this material when it's in a mass can kick off in a hurry on you. And I'm gonna try to move this right along and show you guys the little trick. It's worked good for me in the past. Yep. Just like so, like a little cake icing bag. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get this material out of here relatively quickly because still in a mass here, we're just gonna cut the end of that off. I hope I can get right in there. Maybe over here on the back side. come here and check this, this angle out. And kind of see my perspective. It's almost like you're welding that seam. Isn't that neat? So we're just getting the material on there. Now we're going to smooth it out. I'm going to show you guys several tools. But just like when we spread this out on a putty board, when I'm doing a fillet, I like to go ahead and get some material everywhere. And remember, if this were an actual piece, a lot of times this would be primed with epoxy or resin beforehand. All right. Let's see if we can get better, better light maybe. Come over. Trying to get the best angle for you folks possible. All right. It almost looks like a, a weld, if you will, which that's kind of, all right. Same here, we're just gonna come right. And you can kind of just continue to twist. Very cool, a little bit. Right in there, right in tight. Beautiful. And then, there you go, like right in that little corner. How's that for guessing how much material we needed, folks? That was a pretty good, pretty good guess. It's kind of a trial and error thing. Sometimes there's a learning curve, like knowing how much material. The cool thing to remember, you can always mix up more. You can stop and pick it up. So now we've got the material dispensed, and I'm just gonna set this off to the side. There's some really cool little tools you can use. Matter of fact, West Systems themselves, you can buy these little, um, filleting tools that if you come in here and you're just going to basically drag this material come over here on this side maybe you can see there we go we're just kind of dragging that material out if there's excess it is okay to kind of collect it like we were doing and usually there's going to be some excess if you're building a project A lot of times what we'll do again is get the bulk of it off of there. And then you can come back with the, the straight edge of it and collect the excess there. I hope you folks can see that. That's a Nice little fillet. 
you just have to go a little ways and catch it or else gravity on the uphill side now you can see there i didn't quite make full contact and i can come back it's okay to come back and make another pass pick up some of that excess Sometimes you may have to do that two or three times to get it just perfect. Now, we've got another tool, and again, for the sake of time to speed things along, there are actually filleting tools that you can buy that are made to run down in a radius, and you can actually put that ball right in the corner and drag that material up. We don't use those an awful lot, they got a different size. They got a bigger one, like if you wanted a, a fatter radius or radii, you can use the big end there and draw that material right along like so. Then obviously you would come back and you would pick up the excess. I usually like to kind of take this thing and just roll the excess off in a little cup or something. Then sometimes what we will do is you can even come back. You guys see me all the time with the little flexible, the flexible putty blades. And you're picking up the excess there. Sometimes you'll hit a splinter. When you're over the fillet, can't carry as much material because it will fall off. So <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. Looks like we're gonna end up with another long video, but uh, that is the gist of it. Now there's gonna be a part two, maybe even a part three. We are gonna be wrapping this with some biaxial glass and showing you guys how we would make this a actual structural piece. I think you folks get the gist of what we're doing with the, the fillets there. Um, if you guys are enjoying the videos though, remember to give us the thumbs up, like, share, comment, tell a friend. We want to do more of it. We can only do it with y'all's help. It means a lot to me that you guys are taking the time to watch the channel. And uh, I just, I can't thank you guys enough. So as always, it's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, Fish Bump TV here on YouTube, my fantastic cameraman. They're behind the scenes doing a nice job. And as always, we will catch you guys next time.